For this project, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily make a set of sky balls. They're called sky balls because if you throw or launch one high into the air, you'll see a little parachute opens up bringing them safely back to the ground, which might add a whole new dimension to the fun you can have outdoors. Let's start this project with a pack of latex party balloons. It's nice to have a variety of different colors, and I found a bag of 25 at the dollar store. We're also going to need some rice and a small plastic parachute. These parachutes are made from dollar store tablecloths, and I ended up with eight of them for about a dollar. So watch for how to make these in another project video. Now the construction of our sky balls are going to be very similar to the ninja balls we made in another video. You'll probably remember in that project, we used balloons and flour to make a batch of seamless superhero stress balls that are customizable and fairly durable. Now we'll be making our sky balls pretty much the same way, but instead of flour and juice bottles, this time let's try rice in a two ounce baby bottle. And if you don't have rice, you can use popcorn kernels, sugar, or just about anything else you can think of. Now one bottle full of rice is all we need, and you should find that the mouth is the perfect size for making the transfer. Okay, let's dig through our pile of balloons for one white balloon and three others the same color. Blow up a green one and twist the end so the air doesn't leak out, then stretch the mouth over the top of the bottle. Turn everything upside down, and you should be able to see all the rice flowing out of the bottle and dropping into the bottom of the balloon. Give the bottle a little shake, then pinch the neck of the balloon and carefully pull it off. If you slowly and carefully let all the air out, then tie a knot in the neck to seal the rice inside, you should end up with a cool little squishy ball. Now to make it a little tougher, it's a good idea to add at least two more layers for durability. So go ahead and cut the excess off the top of the knot, then grab another balloon and stretch the mouth wide enough that it'll fit over the entire ball. Do it one more time and you'll have a simple homemade stress ball with three layers of protection. And of course you can add as many layers as you want. Now to give the balls a little character, let's cut three half circles around the edges of a white balloon and make a hole through the center as well. Stretch it around the outside of the ball and smooth out any wrinkles to finish it off and make it look really cool. Alright, it's time for the squishy ball and the parachute to join forces. Look for the two loops at the end of the parachute cord and carefully thread a piece of string through both of them and tie them together. The other end needs to be tied to the balloon as tightly as you can, making sure the string is attached underneath the knot at the top. Now go ahead and cut off the excess string and your paraball is finished, ready for you to head outside to see if it works. All you need to do is toss the ball high into the air and the parachute should open and float gently back to the ground. I'll show you how to pack them so they do that in just a second. Now of course the tighter you pack your chute, the longer it'll take for it to open, which means the higher you can get them. I spent two more hours and made eight different colored sky balls, each with their own white jackets, which kind of makes them look like a nest of flying Yoshi's eggs. They're soft and squishy like stress balls, and the rubber skins make them really easy to handle. Now just for fun, let's try using a handheld water balloon slingshot to see just how high we can get them before they open. Impressively, you can see it does a pretty decent job. I like this method because the slingshot is powerful and looks awesome, and it really doesn't take much effort to get the parachutes way into the sky. But if you don't have one, remember that throwing the balls by hand can be just as fun as well. Now to pack our parachutes, simply hold them at the top so you can pull the string straight, then squeeze all the air out of the material. Fold them in half and begin rolling the parachute up toward the ball, and when you get to the strings, carefully wrap those around the parachute as well. This will help keep the bundle together, but it'll also unravel fairly easily when we throw it. The tighter you can get your parachute, the longer it'll take for it to open. And if you wrap the strings in a cross pattern, it'll add a slightly longer delay. By the way, you'll probably notice that your parachute opens a lot faster when the wind is blowing as opposed to when it's calm outside. So make sure you take that into account as well. If you notice the lines start twisting up after a bad throw, it's not hard to unravel them. But if you want to go one step further, try adding some elastic cord and a barrel swivel to your balloons. I found these swivel clips in the fishing aisle of a local super center, and you can see the clips make it really easy to untangle the lines, then clip them back together when you're in a hurry. To finish up, I took my kids to the park and tried loading a ball into the candy cannon pressurized to 120 psi with a bike pump. This way, even my kids can shoot them sky high with the simple press of a button. And since the parachutes only take a few seconds to repack, they can be ready to launch again as soon as you are. Now check this out, for one last experiment, I went ahead and loaded all eight of my sky balls into the candy cannon at the same time to see what would happen if we fired them off at once. The result is unexpectedly awesome. They kind of look like a team of mini skydivers out for a good time. Well now you know how to use rice, balloons, and a plastic tablecloth parachute to make a cool set of high-flying sky balls. And chances are you already have the materials to make them hiding somewhere around your house. Well that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com. Hey guys, I hope you learned something new or at least saw something you like. Thank you so much for watching and sharing my videos. That is exactly why you are the best.
Now, if you're in the mood to see another project video, just click here to go back one or here to go forward. You can also see some of my other favorite projects by clicking on any of these. If clicking the screen isn't working, just look down in the description. I've put all the links down there as well, including links to some of my favorite playlists. Thanks again for watching, sharing, and supporting my videos, and I will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.